In this question from January 2014, we have a uniform water pipe, AB, being held in limiting equilibrium by a light and extensible cable attached to B and to a fixed point C. The pipe is of length 30 metres and the mass is 250 kilograms. The end A of the pipe rests on rough horizontal ground. The angle between the pipe and the ground is 20 degrees and the cable BC makes an angle of 70 degrees with the horizontal. So there are quite a few things there that we need to take care of. The length, the mass, the angles, the rough ground and so on. So we're told the tension in the cable is T newtons. We can see that on the diagram, but we're asked to draw a diagram showing the external forces acting on the pipe. And then part two to state one modeling assumption making that we're making about the pipe. So when you're drawing the diagram, you would never draw a 3D object like the pipe. So what we're going to do is start off with just drawing the ground like that. And then for the pipe, we're going to represent that just by the line and then the tension in the cable. We'll have like so and our other forces then we can mark on. So there's the force T. We're going to have the weight acting downwards. We'll have the normal reaction at the point A and then we'll have this frictional reaction acting out to the left. I'm going to call it FR and I'm going to call that the normal reaction. And then the weight is 250 G. But as it says in the question over here, G is going to be 10. So we'll just write down 2,500 straight away. So I've marked on some of the important pieces of information, but remember it's important to label each part of the question. So we'll go to part one, and there we have the forces acting on the pipe. Now part two is the modeling assumption. So we have a pipe, it tells us it's uniform, so we're not assuming that the weight acts in the middle, we're told that information, it's uniform, so the weight acts in the middle. So the only other assumption that is valid is the fact that we're turning our pipe and representing it into a line, turning it into this line. So the pipe is a rod, that is what we're assuming. So the examiner will be looking for the idea that a uniform pipe is a uniform rod, so it's just the line we're not taking into consideration the shape, we're just representing it with this line that we have here in blue. Now in part three, we're asked to find the magnitude of T. It doesn't actually say magnitude, but we're asked just to find T. It doesn't say find the force or find the magnitude and direction. We're just asked to find T, in other words, the value of T. So we're not interested in this stage uh, um, in R. We're not interested in the friction. We're just interested in T. So what we're going to do is take moments about the point A. That's down at the bottom here. So we'll take moments about A. And that gives us method marks, or A method mark. And it will enable us to eliminate R and the friction. So the whole length of the rod is 30 metres, so we have 15 metres there and we have 15 metres there, so those are our distances. So the only forces acting are going to be the weight and the tension, or the only forces on our equation will be the weight and the tension and the moment about A. So if we take, if we take the weight first of all, are 2,500 and we want to get its moment. So we need to get the component. We need to get the component of the 2,500 newtons perpendicular to our 15 metres or our 15 centimetres length. So we resolve the 12 perpendicular to the rod, so 2,500 times the cosine of our angle 20, and then we're going to multiply it by the distance, and that will be our clockwise moment. So we'll have 2,500 times the cosine of the angle 20, because this little angle in here is 20 degrees, 
multiplied by 15 and that's going to be equal to the component of the tension multiplied by the distance. So we're going to use the distance of 30 metres that we have here and therefore we need to get the component of T perpendicular to that 30 metres. So what I'm going to do is use the dotted line that you see here. So that dotted line is at 90 degrees to the rod. So I just put in a little right angle there just to emphasise that. So we need to get the component of the tension, the component of T, acting in this direction. Now the angles here are a little bit complicated. So we've got our 70 degrees marked here. So looking at the, and that's to the horizontal, so to the vertical we're going to have 20 degrees. And then if we continue the horizontal line across here, we know that we've got 20 degrees in here between the rod and the horizontal. So this is 20, which means this one is 70. And that means this is going to be 20 as well up here. So we'll put 20 degrees in there too. So therefore the component of T the component of T perpendicular to the 30 metres is going to be T times the cosine of 40 degrees multiplied by the 30 metres. So we'll have T cos 40 so that's the component of the T in the direction which is perpendicular to our rod. So we multiply that by the distance which is 30. And that equation will give you three or four marks. So solving this equation then, we'll have 2500 cos 20 multiplied by 15. And then if we divide by the coefficient of t on the right hand side which is 30 cos 40 degrees that will give us our value for t and that gives us 1533.3 and so on newtons which to three significant figures then is 1530 newtons and that's part three of the question so part four says, hence find the magnitude of the reaction at A. So we've already taken moments, so now it's time to resolve. So as always, we'll resolve vertically and we'll resolve horizontally. So make sure you write down that that's what you're doing, either in words or by the little symbols. So we're resolving vertically. Now, vertically, we've got the weight acting downwards, which is 2,500. It's in the vertical direction, so we don't need any cause or sign. Up the way, then, we've got the reaction R. If you look back at the first slide, you'll see that. And then, again, if you look back at the first slide, you'll see that we have this issue with the tension. So here's part of the diagram showing the tension. So T acts at an angle of 70 degrees to the horizontal. We're resolving vertically, as we see here. So therefore, we need to get the component of T turning away from the 70 degrees. So R goes upwards, the reaction. We're going to be adding on to that the component of T up the way, which will be T times the sine of 70 degrees. Now we know what T is, so if we sub in the value for T, we'll get then that 2500 minus T, which was 1533, using our not rounded version, times the sine of 70. will give us R. And when we work that out, R turns out to be... 
So that's the vertical component. Now if we resolve horizontally, the only forces acting horizontally are the frictional force, which if we add it onto the diagram up here, it was to the left, and then the component of the tension in the horizontal direction. So we have the friction to the left, we have the tensions component to the right, and they're balanced. So therefore the friction will be equal to T cos 70 degrees, which is 524.3 approximately. So the question asked us for the reaction at A, so we've now worked out its two components. We've got the horizontal component, 524. We've got the vertical component, 1059. So we draw our usual little diagram. So the, the 50, 524 to the left, and then R going up the way, 1059. And a wee bit of our friend Pythagoras will give us the resultant of the force at A. So and I can't call it R because I'd used R earlier on, so let's call it P, or any of the other letter you like. So P then is going to be the square root of the 524 squared plus 1059 squared. So P is 1181.5, which is 1180 newtons correct to three significant figures. And Ronnie asked for the magnitude of the force, so we don't need to work out the direction, so that's it. So what you see on this slide is worth seven marks. So a lot of work for our seven marks.